Today is August 6th. August 7th, I kept saying in my head, August 7th, August 7th. What it means is that I'm fighting in the cage for the first time. This guy right here, Yosuke Shingu, he is um, fighting. This is his debut for Rage in the Cage 82, yes. um, in fact. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, so um, uh, I work at the marketing agency. Uh, I train at the New Limits Academy with Zevin and JD. And then I train at the American Elite. And then, uh, you know, I love my dog. And that's pretty much it. So almost the last eight years or nine years, I always told people that, you know, I'm gonna fight in the cage. And I never did. But I was like, I'm gonna go into the cage MMA for sure and then just do it. And then this time around, I decided the date, August or September, whatever the promotion have the event, I'm gonna do it. And it came August 7th. In my head, whenever the first time I heard, it's like too early. August 7th, I wish that was August 22nd or something like that. But I remember that I was like, hmm, I'm just gonna fucking do it. Two years ago, or like a year ago, a year and a half ago, I was like 185 or 180, something like that. But today I'm 144, meaning I lost 40 pounds in like two years. And then I didn't lose it like that. Gradually lost it. Changed my diet to no soda, like a, not many sugar, and the cardio, and then like, you know, like I was talking to Zevin yesterday. What's the most enjoyable moment, fight or training? That's what I asked with Zevin. And he said, best feeling is that he knows he have fought. That's a feeling I'm chasing after. Yeah, we're going to uh, Plaza Nutrition. Uh, they built a, you know, Muay Thai, like a little bit of a place to people hit pads and boxing gloves or whatever. And then uh, Chaz Malky, he's like, a, he actually trained from Thailand and he's a, like a badass. And then he's gonna fix my little bit of a striking a little bit before the fight. So I'm kind of excited about it. What's going on with you, man? So you done? Yeah, in 30 minutes? Right Let's go get some movies. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to go back to practice again in like a few hours? Two yeah. hours? Seven o'clock. Practice. Last hard practice, I guess. And then I don't know. It's kinda like I kind of want to practice hard till like the day before, you know? Yeah. But I guess you have to rest. I think the cool things about like this training camp, like, I don't know if I can call it training camp, I feel like kind of life. I can see my progress and I can feel my progress. I think that's the most thing I love about this sports. I don't even know this is sports or not, you know? We're fucking crazy people. <laughs> people. People trying to like kill people 
to hurt people, choke people. We're like a different kind of people, but end of the day, this is a sports, you know, win, with win or lose or draw or whatever. I know I did this in my life. This is something I gotta do to be happy, honestly. Two pounds in two hours. So 152.6. Like if I don't have this on, 149. So 3.6 pounds. Take a shower and be fine. Alright, Chase, how much do you have to lose? 20 pounds. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Final round, about 5 minutes, really so. 30 minutes, uh, 30 second sprint, and then get heart rate up. 5 minute jog, 30 minute sprint, 30 second sprint, get heart rate up. I guess when you sweat more, is that uh, when your heart rate is coming down, that's when you sweat. Hey, this is Devin. That's not true at all. <laughs> Five minutes later. Damn, guys. I sweat this fucking much. <laughs> it's crazy. So now, right now, you can see. Oh, I guess it doesn't work. But heart rate is like about 150. I'm sweating my ass off. Chase is dying over there. Not just dying over there, using my hoodie. I want that hoodie back. But. Yeah, this is what it takes to lose 4 pounds. I don't know how Chase is going to lose 18 pounds though. Alright, peace. Everybody asks me, have you fought in the cage? You know, I always say, no, I'm, I'm going to. And then, tomorrow, if somebody asks me, I can say, I have fought. I don't know, it's kind of a weird feeling. It's like, I'm, I feel calm. I'm not nervous at all. It's kind of like I was thinking about yesterday. I've done a Japanese traditional dance in front of like thousands of people. I was like 13 or maybe 12. And then I remember I practiced about like three years or so for that 13 minutes of the show. I don't remember anything. I was on the stage, but I remember my body just took over to do my stuff. So I feel like tomorrow it's going to be like that. You know, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do, and then my body take over. Yeah, I feel like I'm at the ticket top of my game, looking down at the rafters. I had to sun these boys, can't leave them bastards. A lot of dudes, just some undercover actress. I don't fall for it, I'm privy to all your tactics. I think uh, 4.35, time to go. Okay, so day of the fight, I tried to sleep in till like 11, and then woke up, I went to the fighting, and then, you know, Carson, I needed some uh, emotional support. Come hang out with me. I was like, all right, cool. He's like, I just need, you know, kind of an emotional support kind of guy. I was watching a video that Zevin sent me that Mike Tyson was crying before the fight. Uh, he showed me this video, um, Mike Tyson, and he's kind of an emotional support guy. Teddy Atlas is his name. And then uh, he had a friend there, and then he knocked out the other opponent for eight seconds. So I thought that was cool and I was like, well, I need an emotional support. So I called Carson and then uh, he, uh, he was with me all the time. Um, and like while, like throughout the day, like when there's times where like Yosuke was just warming up, I was like learning more about Teddy Atlas. And I actually read this article and this is pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know if Yosuke knew about this, but Teddy Atlas like almost killed Mike Tyson. He actually like pointed a gun at him and um, shot it, but just like left of his ear. Uh, I don't know, but 
Mike Tyson became one of the greatest boxers ever because Teddy Atlas let him survive. So the LSK is still standing because I was there. <laughs> What's today, man? Today's the day. Yep. We gotta kick some, kick some ass tonight. I think that uh, finally came, you know. Mm -hmm. Finally, I can make a fist. <laughs> I couldn't do it for like a month. Doctors, they, they make me a push up or something, which is funny because my wrist was hurting. And the doctor was asking me, like, hey, do your wrist hurt? Like, I'm like, no. Your like, fist hurts? Like, I'm like, no. I think that's the only time I lied to the doctor. Yeah, perfect timing. Perfect timing. And then I probably can't make a fist for like another two months <laughs> after tonight. But it's okay. <laughs> Legacy is forever. Yep. There it is, bro. It's like an hour of cardio, two hours of practice. I've done that, no rest days. I think it shows. It shows that to the people around me, I appreciate the support that everybody put to sacrifice and then for me. I was there, I got to go downstairs with him um, and kind of just wait. Uh, it was kind of hurry up and wait. That's kind of what it was. It was like just a bunch of fighters getting ready, you know, getting taped up and um, really just preparing themselves, uh, you know, physically and mentally uh, to go into the cage. As, you know, as we're getting closer, um, there was like less kind of conversation going on and more just, you know, Yosuke is putting on his headphones and just, uh, listening to his music and it was just I was like bewildered by this because he was not nervous like, he didn't seem nervous um, he just seemed really locked in and focused I give it a look. Okay, did they not end up getting the right song? Because it seemed like a long Lion King intro. Um, Lion King song come on, the whole place just erupted and um, it, was, it was just insane. We were screaming so loud like we couldn't even think. I was like, oh no, I don't know if this is ever gonna hit. And it, it did and it was awesome. Everyone like really uh, reacted well to it. Yosuke started walking out, I was like, awesome. I see, I couldn't see any, everybody anywhere. Like, it was kind of like bright light. I couldn't see anybody. I was just like focusing on what's gonna happen. And then, yeah, I mean, the fight happened. It was kind of surreal, like just touch his hand. And then, you know, I probably threw the first kick I kicked a second time and he caught my leg and he took me down. And then I was like, man, like he punched fucking hard. My eyes, it's almost like looking at this bright light into my eyes and they just all dipped to white. It's just so white. And then all I was thinking is like, 
I gotta get up, get up, get up. So I got up, and then like literally it was still white, I couldn't see anything. And like, I got my conscious back and I can, I can kind of see him. And then I, like, whenever I realized and then he just trying to shoot, trying to take me down and then I was on top of him. And I was like, hell yeah, I was gonna punch. And then that was first round. And then I was not tired after that, you know, but like in the second round, you know, I was cautious about he's gonna catch my leg. So I didn't kick too many. And then I was like very cautious. And then second round, I think I got him pretty good overhand right. I've been hurting my hand here. I hit him pretty good. And then I couldn't feel my hand after that. Third round comes in. I was not still tired. I was like ready to go. It's kind of like practice. You know, I feel confident. He couldn't punch me. All that stuff, I, I was feeling good. And then my corner told me off of the right hand, counter, counter, off of the right hand. So I was just looking at his right hand and then it never fucking came, <laughs> you know? It never came, I was just waiting, waiting, waiting. I was just trying to be patient. And then, you know, I didn't do much on the third round. I think I got him pretty good like a couple times, but he didn't hurt me. And then I knew that point because of the first round of the knockout was so much for me. I knew at the time I lost. All the coaches and they believed in me and then they thought I was gonna win and then I didn't. Yeah, a lot of people after the fight thought I won. Some people did and then looking, at, looking back at the footage, it looks like I could have won, yeah, maybe. But looking back, I was, I knew I lost. He was a better man in that ring. So um, I think the day before the fight, I asked Devin, what do you enjoy the most? Are you training, fighting, you know? And then he told me that he enjoyed the thought of knowing that he had fun. That's kind of what I was looking for, because Whenever I tell people that I train MMA, I train Muay Thai, everybody asks me, have you fought before, you know? And then I say, no, not yet. I, I always say I will. And then now, even though I have a L on my record now, but also, I don't know, you can see, this uh, fucked up eyes over here. Uh, I can say uh, I have fought. I'm a goal-oriented person. I know that I need to have a goal to live my life. And I think the meaning of life to me is to be the best version of yourself. Yeah, I achieved my goals to be in the cage. It's a long time coming, but that's not the only goal. I think my greatest takeaway from this fighting is that it is only your responsibility to get better or to achieve something. However, you can't do it by yourself. That's the biggest takeaway from me. For the longest time, I thought like fighting is individual sports. I like to do things individually to get better. Yeah, you have to hold your responsibility to yourself. However, you can't, you can't forget appreciation and the respect to other people and the teammate and the people around you, family and friends. They all care and sacrifice a lot of things to help each other out. If somebody is trying so hard to get something, I would like to help out that person. And then I will never forget that people who support me this journey, I will do that for them. This is not just my accomplishment. This is collective accomplishment for me. That I think that is the biggest takeaway for me. Maybe people watching this, or maybe uh, I'm watching this footage maybe 10 years from now. I think that uh, excuse and that all that bitch in your, inside your head you can conquer yourself. 
because even you're 40 years old or if you're 30 years old, it's never too old. People say, you know, you can do something else or you don't have to be fighting or anything like that. But I think what I wanted to say is that I think you're, you or like anybody is very capable of doing a lot of things if you really, really put your time into it. And then I think that men who lies on the deathbed will regret the things you haven't done. So if you want to do something, just do it. You know, I thought uh, I would never fight again maybe, but uh, knowing me, just losing one time to not do it again, I don't think that's gonna be me. So I'll fight again.